the book of Ezekiel, chapter 8, with the word of wisdom from our Father, in Jesus' name, verse 1. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, one more day, and it would be 666. It'd be the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the sixth day of the month, the day after this. And when does Satan appear as the false Christ in Jerusalem? At 666, the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial. And you'll find that that will play into this chapter significantly. So in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, Ezekiel, that is to say, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Then I beheld in low a likeness as the appearance of fire. Our God is a consuming fire. From the appearance of his loins, even downward, fire. The last verse of Hebrews chapter 12 will document for you that our God is a consuming fire. And from his loins even upward, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber, appeared to be polished spectrum metal, that is to say, as we read of in the first chapter, that vehicle. And he put forth the form of an hand, and took me by a lock of mine head, and the Spirit lifted me between earth and the heaven, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. This is speaking of that abomination of desolation, better translated, the desolator who comes on the wings of abomination, Satan standing in Jerusalem claiming to be Christ's return. What did Lucifer say in Isaiah chapter 14? He said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, stars being symbolic of God's children. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. And we see in Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 3 in Jerusalem and the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north. Where was the seat of the image of jealousy which provoketh to jealousy? The image of the beast that's written of in the book of Revelation. The image of Satan is what that image is. He says to the one world system to make an image and to worship that image. That means to make him king over them. In order for him to become the one world dictator of his one world religious system, people have to think that he's Christ return and make him king over them. And that's when he becomes the king of Babylon. Just as it was written in 1 Samuel, whenever the Israelites of old decided that they didn't want God to reign over them, they wanted a king that they could see. And they said to Samuel, make us a king to reign over us. So there you have it. Make an image. Make me king over you is what Satan's going to say to them as it's written in Revelation 13, that image of the beast. Satan wants all the glory and all the worship for himself, obviously. So he's not going to say make a statue or something like that. The image is an image of Satan being transmitted throughout the world. And whenever they see him, he's very beautiful. You have to remember that. They're going to think that he's Jesus and he performs miracles signs and lying wonders what are they supposed to think if they weren't familiar with their father's word exactly that's why it's a test to see who loves god and who doesn't because if you loved god you would read his word and try your best to understand it chapter by chapter and verse by verse and if you were to do that you would see plainly and obviously that the false Christ is Satan himself, and he shall appear in Jerusalem before anybody gathers back to Christ. It's right there in Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and many other places. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, verse 5, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. Our God is a jealous God, and people are going to whore after Satan, worshiping him instead of Christ, which is what Antichrist means, instead of Christ. That's why it's called the image of jealousy. He said, Furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, 
that I should go far off from my sanctuary. And what did Christ say in Matthew 24 and verse 15? When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, the desolator, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place in Jerusalem in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. So there you have it. The image of jealousy, the image of the beast. But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Jeazaniah the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, in the darkness, that is to say, every man in the chambers of his imagery? Here we go again, the image of the beast. Satan as Antichrist is the time frame we're looking forward to. For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. And he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. Remember, Isaiah 14 and verse 13. We'll begin reading this time with verse 12, so that you understand what's being said in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Verse 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. This is the fall of Satan right here, trying to be God. Everything Satan does is a cheap fabric imitation of God's pattern. He even has a fake Godhead, a unholy trinity is what I like to call it, the dragon, the false prophet, and the beast, as opposed to the holy trinity, our father's triune godhead of the father, the son, and the holy spirit. It's a cheap fabric imitation, and as I mentioned before, the four living creatures that we read of in the first chapter of this book of Ezekiel that surround our father's throne, Satan has a fake imitation of that as well, and that's the four angels that are loosed from the great river Euphrates at the sixth trumpet whenever he appears. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. He's going to be locked up in the bottomless pit upon the return of the true Christ at the seventh trumpet, and that's when the first resurrection occurs. You can read of it in Revelation chapter 20. They that see thee during the millennium shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? See, he's called a man here, as well as in Ezekiel 28, which is where he gets the death sentence. So that's how he's the son of perdition and the Antichrist written of in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Called a man here and Ezekiel 28 and Revelation 13, where it says it is the number of a man, 600, three score, and six, 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 six. The sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial is when Satan appears as Antichrist. He's called a man in 1318 of Revelation, as well as in Isaiah, verse 16 of chapter 14 that we're now reading. Verse 17, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. The true Christ is the branch. He's the abominable branch, the false Christ, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, as opposed to the tree of life, which is the true Christ. And as the raiment of those that are slain, he's got the death sentence. He's going to be cast into that lake of fire after the thousand years are finished. Thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial because thou hast destroyed thy land. 
the destroyer being one of his names, and slain thy people, he will slay a third spiritually, as we know from Revelation chapter 9, the seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. His offspring, the Kenites, will be done away with at the seventh trumpet as well. Not their souls, but they'll no longer be Kenites because that's the thing of the flesh. They're hybrids. Their souls will continue on throughout the thousand years, and they'll have an opportunity to go into the third world age, that is to say the eternity themselves, or they can follow Satan after the thousand years are finished and be blotted out in the lake of fire, if they so choose. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon, which means confusion, the name and remnant, and son and nephew, saith the Lord. No more Kenites upon the return of the true Christ, because it's at that time that all are changed into spiritual bodies. I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, the broom of destruction. He's going to clean house, in other words, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand, that I will break the Assyrian which is a name for Antichrist. The Assyrian was a type of Antichrist in my land and upon my mountains, which are nations, tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth, the whole planet. This is looking forward to the end. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon the nations. For the Lord of hosts hath purposed, and who shall disannul it? Nobody. And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? Nobody. Nobody can. It's God, the Creator, the Lord of the universe. As it is written, so it shall be. So returning to Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 14, then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz, then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. What is this weeping with Tammuz, an idol personifying vegetable and animal life, worshipped in Phoenicia and Babylonia? So again, we're talking about the Babylon of the end times, the confusion upon the world whenever they're whoring after Satan, thinking that he's Jesus because of their ignorance. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, which is the true Christ in actuality, the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshiped the sun toward the east. This dates back to the Tower of Babel as well. That is to say Babylon. And ultimately it looks forward to the ultimate in idolatry whenever they worship Lucifer instead of Christ, which is what Antichrist means. And all this you can see going on nowadays in the so-called Christian churches with the Ishtar celebrations and the sunrise services whenever Christ resurrected on a Saturday evening at the end of the week, not on Sunday morning. So what are they even doing? That predates the first advent of Christ, this sun worship that was going on in Babylon and everywhere else, Baal worship. And who is Baal really ultimately? Satan. That's who they're worshiping here. And he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? This is all going on in Jerusalem. For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose, that abominable branch we read of in Isaiah 14. You can liken this too, as far as a type looking forward to the ultimate in idolatry at the sixth trumpet. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye will not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. Looking forward to the days of vengeance whenever the true Christ returns and the discipline is brought down upon their heads for their own good in that day, the day of the Lord, whereby they won't go into the lake of fire, hopefully.